Hello, it's Scott Manley here. As you may have heard, I have been in Europe, specifically in the Netherlands for ESA's Open Day at their ASTEC facility. I have been talking with space people, hanging out with astronauts from the Apollo program and from ESA's modern program. I've had a great time, but I obviously haven't been making videos, although I have collected a lot of video material. And I want to include a little segment that I recorded at the museum there. While you normally can't get into ASTEC to see what's going on inside there because that's a working facility, there is a museum called Space Expo. And one of the exhibits is from an old Ariane 1 rocket. Okay, so what we've got here, supposedly, is the rear end of an Ariane 1. And there's a nice little plaque here that tells us all about it. But I'm most interested in showing this deconstructed engine. So this is a Viking 2 engine, if it's an Ariane 1. And Obviously, you know, you can see inside all of the stuff. We've got uh, the gas generator, combustion chamber, you've got your main combustion chamber, and around here you can see up to your turbine. So our uh, current working theory, because we can't find this info on the internet, is that the red lines are bringing fuel from the lower tank, and the yellow lines run up the side of the rocket to the oxidizer tank. So the Viking 2 engines ran on hypergolic propellants, dinitrogen tetroxide and UDMH. So if we come around the side here, here from the high pressure manifold, you have these lines that run up into this object here. And again, high pressure manifold, you have this line that comes up and feeds into this. So this, I am surmising, is your gas generator that generates high pressure gases and you can see around the outside there's these holes so that travels down that pipe into around the other side the turbine so you've got your turbine blades there so high pressure gas comes in on the left and blows through comes out the right and of course runs down these exhaust pipes now this then drives a common shaft and that is a centrifugal pump that is pumping the fuel from the tanks down into the high pressure manifold. And on the left side, we have the centrifugal pump that is pumping the fuel into the high pressure manifold here. So this is the main combustion chamber where the fuels mix. There's no ignition system necessary because it is a hypergolic ignition system. So the oxidizer comes down here blows in here and you can see little opposing jets here so those uh, shoot into each other and atomize the fuel or prepare our oxidizer on the other side this is the fuel and again these uh sorry on this side <laughs> yeah this is the side is the fuel and it runs down these little gaps here and squirts out and mixes everything in the combustion chamber and you have a glorious rocket engine coming out here and we're actually on countdown to a launch here because we are at a museum and it's going to get very loud. But that might just give me enough time to point out the, uh, the system here we have for gimballing the engines. They only gimbal on one axis, right? So these can rock from this point of view, they can rock to the left and to the right. Very easy. Every single one of these four engines can do it because there's four on the first stage. So they're able to move and provide the roll control, the yaw control, and the pitch control just by moving in one axis because there are four of them. So yeah, this is a fantastic exhibit. I was so excited when I started taking it apart. I was just kind of had a problem that we couldn't figure out. We couldn't find a definitive source on the what was fuel and what was oxidizer. So we've made an educated guess. I'd love to know more. But that's not all of the story. There's a few things that I noticed when I rewatched this video that we missed. For example, the plaque at the museum, what I, I read, it actually says the fuel is hydrogen and oxygen. And hydrogen and oxygen is what the new Vulcan uh, engine uses. These old engines are, of course, you know, hypergolics. And something I missed probably because I didn't know it when I recorded the video was the blue segments. Those are intake for water. So the, the Viking's a kind of interesting engine because the gas generator, normally on engines they use a fuel-rich mixture to run the gas generator so that the, the exhaust gases aren't super hot and don't melt the turbine. On the Viking, instead they use a regular stoichiometric ratio on the gas generator and add high-pressure water to cool the thing down. 
So on the far left of the turbo pump, you can see the small blue pump that is pumping the water into the high pressure system. And I believe that the water is sprayed up from the bottom of the gas generator's con uh, combustion chamber so that it then cools the exhaust gases before they feed through into the turbine. And finally, while this engine isn't used on Ariane rockets anymore, they use the Vulcan instead, the, a derivative of this engine is the Vikas engine, which is used on Indian launch vehicles. And it is pretty much a carbon copy, but it has, of course, been adopted and modified and improved upon, and it's used on current generation Indian launch vehicles. So anyway, I'll be back in the US in a day or so, and then, of course, I've got a ton of footage that I have to turn into cool and interesting videos. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.